God will never forsake you. It is God that is calling you to cross over. It's time to get up, step up, step out in faith, take a risk, do what God has called you to do, become who God has called you to become. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't let fear, doubt or negativity keep you here trapped. It's time to cross over. It's time to break camp. It's time to advance and go in and possess the promises of God for your generation. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, love and of self-control. Our fears are the cages that hold us back. If we're talking about the lions were in that cage, well, the bottom line is I think for many of us, we are caged in by our fear. If God has not sent us a spirit of fear and fear is so rampant on the earth, do the math. Guess who sent it? And if you were the devil and you wanted to cripple and immobilize the body of Christ, what would you send? You would send a spirit of fear. You would send the very thing that God did not send in order to take Christians out. And so what we need to do is stop being scaredy cats. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. There's a reason why God tells us this is not from me. God doesn't want us locked in, caged and trapped like those, island, like those lions at Taronga Zoo. That's not what God wants for our life. So many of us are just paralyzed by our fears rather than living the abundant life that Jesus Christ has called us to live. We are paralyzed by the fear of what other people think. That would be one of the biggest ones. And you know what? Ultimately, it really doesn't matter what other people think. What does God think? If I would not be doing anything I'm doing today if I cared what other people think. My family thinks I'm crazy in case you wonder what they think. Not my one, my husband and my kids, but my family of origin. Because you know what? If I tried to please them, there would be no A21. There would be no Propel. There would be no television program because I would be the good Greek girl sitting at home cooking baklava right now, breeding many more children. Well, not anymore because I can't, but back in the day, okay. <laughs> but you know what? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that wasn't the only thing God had called me to do. And so many of us, we settle because our mum might not be happy or our father might not be happy, or the teacher might not be happy, or our friends. How many of our destinies have we put on hold in order to impress our friends and to stay down where we are? Fear that I'm not good enough. So many of us just think we're not good. Look, let me put you out of your misery. To do what God has called you to do, you're not good enough. You feel good? I'm not good enough. Uh, you know, what God has called us to is a supernatural destiny. You cannot fulfill a supernatural destiny with natural ability. So your best natural ability is not good enough to do what God has called you to do. The gap between what God has called you to do and where you are is here and there will always be the gap. It's called the God gap. And so I need God. That's the faith gap. That's where God takes me into doing what I can't do. But that's where His strength is made perfect in my weakness. That's the grace gap. Do you think I could run 15, 8, 21 offices in 11 countries around the world? No, no. Do you think I could be putting traffickers in jail or rescuing? No. Do you think I'd be running propel women around the world? No, I don't have the ability. It is all outside of my skill set. I've never been trained in television. I've never been trained in that kind of communication. This is all outside of my skills. If God does not show up, I'm toast. <laughs> so let me put you out of your misery. You're not good enough. Okay, so that settles that in case you think I'm not good enough. Fear of failure, that is a really big one. What if I fail? Well, what if you succeed? And what if you fail? Get back. Failure is highly overrated. What are we all so scared of failing for? Big deal. Big deal. Get back up and have another go. You know, we're fear of danger or harm. Well, I already talked to you in session one that you can't avoid it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. At the end of the day, you can take checks and balances, but I get on a plane nearly every day. I cannot, I'm not the pilot and I'm not, I have to trust that the person that is putting the gas in and that the person that's checking the tires and the person that's checking the little screws that hopefully keep the wings attached, one hopes, you know, all of those things. At the end of the day, I'm going to have to let go and trust God. So if I was thinking about fear and danger all the time, I would not travel. I could not do, if I was always worried about, what about my kids? What about, now I do all my due diligence. There is never an excuse for not doing due diligence, but you have got to have faith to step out and say, God, I'm trusting you to fill the gap that I can't fill. And we would do a whole lot more for Jesus if we actually trusted him in that gap. Fear of the unknown. 
Well, the fact is, if we're walking in faith, we're always walking into the unknown. The Bible says of Abraham that he went forth, I love this part, not knowing where he went, to a land that he would recognise when he got there. When was the last time you didn't know where you were going? We are so fearful. I've got to have it all mapped out. Here's my five-year plan. Here's my 10-year plan. This is where it works out. I'm going to have this much money. I'm going to do this. You have a box for everything. You have an app for everything. And what happens if the app breaks? The fact is, you know, I don't even live that kind of life. And I run major global organisations. I have a basic trust in God fact. I do all due diligence. I do a basic plan, but I'm like, Father, this is yours. I don't really know where people go, where you go. I don't know. But I get up every day and I say, Jesus, I don't know where you're going today, but I'm coming wherever you're going. That's, that, that's my bottom line. If you're wondering, that's about the extent. I'm going wherever he's going. And so that means don't box me too much. Is she just rescuing the victims of traffic? Yes. And is she helping women? Yes. And is she doing tele? Yes. And is she teaching the Bible? Yeah. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> wherever. You're not going to fit me in a box because I'm not here to fit into your box. I'm here to obey Jesus as he walks forward. And so that's what we need to do with our lives. And so everything that I have done, everything has been out of my comfort zone, just so that, you know, anything that is bearing fruit that remains has got the touch of God on it. It's not what I've been able to do. You know, when I went to church in, in, in when I was 21, well, you know, for a Greek Orthodox girl to walk into a Protestant church, and to then give my life to Christ and continue to walk on route. That was, I was ostracized. People, my family members did not speak to me for three years. I was not included in any family. You know what? It was a step of faith to go, I didn't see this in my future. I didn't know what was ahead. I couldn't see 30 years in advance. I could just see that my family wasn't talking to me, that my friends ridiculed me because they thought, you're the loser. How'd you become a Christian? Where'd your brain go? You know, that's what kind of happened. And now we look at it 30 years later and go, wow, but I didn't know what was here when I started, but I had Jesus there and that's who I was following and Jesus brought me here. That's how it goes into the future as well. I left my job to go into ministry. I was in a very high paying, lucrative job to go into ministry where I wasn't paid barely for seven years. It didn't make any sense, but it took risk because that's what God called me to do. You know, when I started the youth center, I didn't know anything about youth ministry and had to trust God to grow. When I was a youth evangelist, filling arenas, talking to thousands of young people about Jesus, no one trained me. I didn't know what I was doing. When we started A21, there wasn't a course I went to, how to grow a global anti-trafficking organization. When we started Propel Women, I, I didn't go and read a textbook on how to run a, a, a movement for women who lead and to help women internalize the leadership identity. You know, everything I think about when I got married with my broken past of abuse and abandonment, it was a huge faith risk to trust God that this was the next step for me. I never thought I would have children because I didn't want that. I was so broken. So then when I really felt the Lord say, okay, and then he gives me two daughters. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what a risk of faith that was for me mm -hmm. to think I, I don't want my kids screwed up in any way. So the fact is to become who God wants you to become, to do what God's called you to do. It's always going to take risk personally, emotionally, relationally, financially, physically, in every realm of life. Some of you are so caged by fear that you're not going to step into that relationship because your parents got divorced or because there was some brokenness. And what you've done is you've allowed that to trap you. You haven't given your heart. You won't trust serving in church because somewhere along the line, maybe someone hurt you or, or abused your trust somewhere along the line. It is amazing how we have just become like those lions caged in by our fear. What if, what if, what if? How about you replace what you do not know about the future with what you do know about Jesus. And you know that your God is good. You know that your God does good. And you know that your God will work all things together for good. So why don't you trust the goodness of God versus what you don't know about the future? The world is cray cray. There is no bow. Here is red alert. It's just going to get increasingly cray cray. So why don't you put all your eggs in the basket of Jesus and trust Jesus who is good and who does good. Step out of the boat, take a risk of faith and do the thing that God has called you to do. I have discovered that what is impossible with man is possible with God. I have discovered that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above 
and beyond anything that you could ever ask, hope or think. I know that my eyes have not yet seen, nor my ears heard, nor has it entered into my heart the things that God has for me. I know that with my God, I can advance against a troop and I can climb any wall. I know that I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I do not have to bow down to fear. Self-doubt will kill more dreams than anything ever will. Self-doubt will kill more dreams than failure ever will. You know what? You're going to have to press through your limitation. You're going to have to work with what you've got. You're going to start where you are. You need tenacity. We need courage. We need resilience. We need patience. We need boldness. We need to take risks. I love this scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6 to 8. It's the Lord said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and courageous for you shall go with his people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. I said it twice because it's worthy of being said twice. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. It is God that is calling you to cross over. It's time to get up, step up, step out in faith, take a risk, do what God has called you to do, become who God has called you to become. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't let fear, doubt or negativity keep you here trapped. It's time to cross over. It's time to break camp. It's time to advance and go in and possess the promises of God for your generation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, let me pray for you. So Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are a faithful God that has called us to live an adventurous, daring, purpose-driven, passionate life full of risk and full of faith and full of hope. Thank you, God, that you've not called us to a tame, domesticated, boring religious existence, but you've called us to a wild, glorious unpredictable, faith-filled adventure. And we thank you that you've promised to never leave us or forsake us. Thank you that you are with us in every situation. Give people the strength and courage, just like you said to Joshua, the strength and courage to do the thing that you've called them to do in Jesus' name. Friends, no matter what trouble you're facing today, God has already provided the wisdom, courage, and strength you need to stand. For your gift of support in any amount, we're going to send you Joel Osteen's new book, You Are Stronger Than You Think. Please go to tbn.org forward slash stronger than and thank you for being a part of this global television ministry.